Hi, this is Dr. Shetland, and I've been asked to record a short presentation for patients who are on Ideal Protein for an easy way for them to email and send to friends and loved ones who are curious about it, but uh, have been unwilling to come in for a class uh, first. I'd still recommend a class, uh, highly recommend it, so you can get some some one-on-one -on -one time with a doctor or weight loss coach that can help answer personal questions. But I do want to point out that this program works. Ideal Protein started 25 years ago in France with Dr. Tran, who was working with Olympic athletes to help them lean up, in other words, burn fat while preserving the muscle so they could perform well in their sporting event. Well, as he saw how he could help the biochemistry in the body to just strictly burn fat, that's where this evolved into a weight loss program and has just gone gangbusters around the world. And it's only been available in the United States for about four years now. Two out of every three American adults are overweight. One in three children are overweight or obese. And we as Americans are spending billions of healthcare dollars on obesity-related problems. In other words, health problems and diseases that are secondary to overweight or obesity. Now this overweight crisis leads to a metabolic syndrome that there's four key components of abdominal obesity where we have a lot of weight gain around the the tummy high blood sugar hypertension or high blood pressure and then high cholesterol all four of these are related to sugar now we got to understand that we only consume three things carbohydrates proteins and fats and since the 70s we've had this low fat no fat diet kick which look where that's gotten us it's important we have healthy fats in our diet we don't want to go overboard with fats, but we definitely need to have healthy fats in our diet. The real component is the sugars, and we'll talk about in a minute how sugars and fats together is just a deadly combination. But sugars, we have to watch out for those, because all carbs turn to sugar. And if you look at just a Coke, a single bottle of Coke, which is actually, if you read the label, two servings, not a single serving, in that one bottle of Coke there's 64 grams of carbohydrates, or 10 plus teaspoons of sugar. So if you're having a Coke or a Big Gulp, if you're having a Big Gulp every day, that's just a huge amount of carbs that you're taking in. To have that with something like a donut or a, a hamburger, a Big Mac and french fries, it's just so hard on our, our body, especially our pancreas, which we'll talk about in a minute. So the modern day epidemic is called Syndrome X. If, if you look at this X, those four things we just talked about are at the outer points, abdominal obesity, high cholesterol, high blood sugar. So if we look at this X, there's at the four points, there are those four things we talked about, abdominal obesity, high cholesterol, high blood sugar, high blood pressure. These are, these are caused by, if you look at the center of the X, hyperinsulinemia. This is where our pancreas is overactive, and it's dumping insulin over and over again into the bloodstream to try to pull the sugars and fats out of the bloodstream. Now, if we're in a constant state of eating too much sugar, even if we stop and our pancreas is overactive, it's going to keep dropping that insulin. So that's where we see people who eat one or two meals a day and they're like, God, I'm still gaining weight or I can't lose the weight and I'm hardly eating. If they're in a state of hyperinsulinemia, their body's still dumping too much insulin and that's why they're never going to lose weight. So typically what we hear is we've got to eat right and exercise. It's this, that's the secret combination and it works, but it's really difficult. I mean, you look at the biggest loser. For these people to lose these large quantities of weight, I mean, you have to, a pound of fat is 4,000 calories. And so to burn a pound of fat, you have to run a marathon. That's 26 miles. So with the eating right, the number one there, and the, the more exercise, number three, you can do it. But that's better. it's a better recipe for maintaining, for actually losing weight since we're designed to gain weight. I mean, we have been since the beginning of man that uh, we're fe it's feast and famine and we're just gathering berries or going hunting and we're starving. And then finally we have a meal and then we're starving. So the body's designed that when it has excess, it it's, tries to put it into fat. But now that food is so readily abundant and easy to access, and we're, we don't go hungry too often, our body's just, it's designed to just store extra fat. So we have to actually tip the scale and have an unbalanced diet so that we can flip the switch in the pancreas, because this is what's going on, is number two. This is what's going on with most people, is a dysfunctional pancreas that's putting out too much insulin, and that's why everything's getting stored to fat, or it won't flip the switch to burn fat. Because insulin has two jobs. It lowers the blood sugar, and it stores calories in the forms of fat. Understand that your body only burns three sources of fuel. Glucose is the first choice. That's the easily stored sugars in the muscles. Like when someone is going to run a marathon the next day, they'll carb load with spaghetti or something the night before. They're loading up as much of the glucose into the muscles as they possibly can. Once that's depleted, the body's going to naturally start to break down muscle second. 
In other words, your muscle, which is what you want to build, is the second or the second most easy fuel for your body to keep itself going, to sustain life. So look at it as glucose and muscles like your checking account. It's the easy access calorie cash. But the fat is like your 401k. Your body's only going to access this emergency fund when it is in dire straits. So in order to properly lose weight, we can exercise a whole bunch and try to build up some muscle and burn a bunch of glucose, just eat fewer calories. But what typically happens with that or with other diets where we're lowering the calorie intake, we end up sacrificing muscle and fat. I mean, yeah, we'll lose some fat, but we're going to lose some muscle too. And the problem with that is now that we're over the diet and we start eating normal again, we have less muscle or less metabolism to burn the, the calories. We're in worse shape than we were before the diet and now it's harder we're going to gain more fat and we're going to it's going to be harder to lose it the next time because now we have less muscle to burn fat the, the second time around so ideal protein is unique in that what it does is it depletes the body of the sugars it puts us in a state of ketosis where there's just no sugar to burn there's no glucose to burn or very little i mean it's not a completely glucose free I mean, we've got some carbs but very minimal just enough to help the brain the blood and the adrenals and the heart we cut out all the rest of the carbs and then we have just enough protein to protect the muscle so that the body goes straight to the fat storage to burn the fat. There's no other diet like this. High protein diets don't do this. This is, this is um, an ideal amount of protein so we protect the muscle and burn the fat and minimize the carbs. So with a typical low calorie diet that's balanced and that's what I'm saying is not good, we're lowering the amount of carbs, fats, and proteins equally which puts us in a state of not, it's not optimal for muscle sparing. We're going to lose muscle, we're going to be vitamin deficient, and we're going to lose a little bit of fat. So here we see a balanced diet, here we see a hypocaloric diet, which is the typical diet, and then the ideal protein diet. You'll notice that with ideal protein, we're lowering the carbs substantially, still having healthy fats like coconut oil and olive oil, and in an ideal amount of protein. We're not lowering the protein, and it is not a high protein diet, because it's not just protein. We're supplementing with vitamins and minerals, and by doing this, we put the body in that state of ketosis so that the body is just burning fat and preserving muscle, and that is what we want to do. That's it. So uh, that's it for the intro. Just want to let you know a little bit about it. Uh, for more information, I recommend you come to a class.